What's up, Navigation Nation? What a crazy week in the markets this week. Welcome to this week's video update. Today is Friday, August 2nd. We're going to review all the trade alerts and positions for the week exclusively for our pro members. Before, But before we do, let's jump into the community and talk about who got caught being hot this week. Each week, we like to recognize one member of the community for going above and beyond and helping other traders. And sometimes that comes in the form of asking questions. So one of our newer members who joined about a week ago, Prashant, he uh, came in on fire, came in hot into the community, asking a ton of great questions, really well thought out. I can tell Prashant that you are really focused on learning. I love to see it. We're here to help. And congrats, you got caught being hot. Uh, let's go to the alerts for the week. And actually, before we jump into that, uh, let's go back to Monday, which would be the 20, what is that, the 29th? Uh, actually, before we jump into the alerts, let's just go to the platform and take a look and talk about the market. So this is the S&P 500. Obviously, on Wednesday, the Fed came out and opted to lower interest rates by 25 basis points. There was some speculation that it could be 50 basis points. And what happened was immediately the, uh, the market fell. Not immediately, but later that day, the, the market fell. <clears throat> and then the next day had a huge rebound, almost took back all of the, all of the losses. Uh, but then it just rolled over and died. And it you know, continued lower that day and then uh, down another you know, 20 some points today on the S&P. We've got about a little, little less than an hour and a half left, left in the market on Friday at the time of this recording. So what, what does this all mean? Well, uh, a couple things. And then obviously part of this uh, reversal was, um, was supposedly based on you know, Trump's uh, action in issuing additional tariffs on China. And so you know, that's, that's, uh, that's what's uh, causing this volatility that we're seeing. So going forward, uh, obviously this does a couple things. We had a decent amount of short delta. We we're over four to one on a ratio of short delta to theta ratio earlier this week. And now with this downslide, now we're at a point where we're basically delta neutral. And that's how quickly things can change. Uh, so, you know, I want to give a little bit of perspective, and I don't think I've ever really talked about this in a course or in any of the videos, but one of the reasons that trading is so difficult is because what happens is when you see these extended up moves, especially, especially when you're carrying short delta like we do, or you have these range bound trades, which just automatically give you short delta as price moves into the upper end of the range, what happens is you start accumulating this short delta and then when you get that extension, that extended up move, that becomes a little bit painful, right? And so what happens is over the course of, let's say, 12 months, and this doesn't happen all the time, but in many cases, a lot of your money is made within one or two months out of the year. And that's why it's so difficult for people to, to become successful trading because a lot of people will grind it out for six months and think, man, I, I gave this a good shot. I did it for six months. I'm down money or I'm basically break even. I spent all that time trading and I really have nothing to show for it. And, and it's really in those two months out of the 12 that you really make all the money. And, you, and when you're grinding sideways or you're up a little bit and then you're down a little bit, you're up a little bit, you're down a little bit. From an emotional standpoint, that's so difficult as humans to uh, to to work with because we're we want to win right naturally we are competitive we want to win and I'm no different I mean there's there's times that still today even after trading as long as I have that you get in these positions and you you almost think is this thing ever going to go down again right I mean is this this is this thing going to just keep grinding higher and you know with short delta that puts you know, pressure on our PL to the downside, you know, is this ever going to stop? And then boom, in a matter of three days, boom, 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 the market drops. And now we're Delta neutral and we don't have that short Delta. We wish we would have had more short Delta, you know, all those hindsight games that, that, that you play with yourself as a trader. So I, I just talk about that because I want to give you perspective that 
you know, hey, the, I'm trading this stuff with real money. And so everything that you all are feeling with the alerts, I'm feeling too. And and so it's just something that as a trader, there's there's never going to be a time when you don't have a drawdown. There's no strategy. There's no system. There's no portfolio management that can withstand periods of not ever having a drawdown. And so as a trader, you've got to have the right mindset. You've got to have the right mental focus and understanding that there are going to be those periods, but things can also change very quickly like we're seeing now. Uh, I sent out the uh, month end update posted on our blog and in the community that gives a, an update on all of our closed trades. Uh, just to give you all as pro members kind of an update of where we're at with PL with all open positions and everything else is, I mean, we're, we're up about $3,000 on the year, which, you know, I mean, that's frustrating, right? We've, we've been, you know, almost over halfway through the year and we're up about 3000. I think we started the year with, uh, don't quote me on this, but I think it was like 84,000. So if we have $3,000 profit divided by 84,000, what is that? Like three and a half percent. Uh, yeah, we're up about three and a half percent, which, you know, then you start playing these games with yourself. Well, you know, if I just would have put it in an S and P 500 index fund, I'd be up a lot more, you know, those, those kind of things. And, and you start playing these hindsight games, but the reality is, is, you know, there's a lot of years where we're making 30, 40, 50% and the market's flat or down. I mean, last year's a good example. We made it almost 30% where the market was, um, was down. So you can't play those hindsight games. The, the, the reality is, is we have a strategic edge with the way that we trade and it's not always going to be the greatest, but when you have these one directional extended moves, but you've got to stick with the program and you have to stay small enough. This is the key. I know I beat this dead horse all the time, but you've got to keep your position size small enough so that those periods when it's going against you, you can stay in the game you have that cash ready to pounce in periods like we're seeing right here. That is the key. And so, um, you know, hopefully you guys had some of that short delta on like we did. Hopefully you've got some cash ready to add positions uh, like we've been doing here the last couple of days. And, uh, and, and, you know, this is when it's really fun. This is when trading is fun, when we get this volatility, when we get this two-sided action. When you have these one-directional extended moves, that's uh that's not very fun. A applied volatility is contracting. There's not a ton to do. Uh, now is when the fun starts. So hopefully this keeps up and and we start getting some two sided action. We don't want the market to crash. We don't want the market just to go straight down, but we do want two sided action. So hopefully that's what we're gonna start seeing. All right. Hopefully that was helpful. Um, let's jump into the alerts. Starting with Monday, we did a rolling adjusting trade in SMH. Uh, another, another ETF, another symbol that I, you know, just felt like it was continuing to go up forever and it was never going to stop. We have two different pieces on here and this one, we just rolled one set of our short strangles, uh, that was in August, had 18 days to expiration, rolled that out to September. Remember when we have uncovered option positions like short strangles, straddles, we like to roll those once we get down under that 21 days to expiration. Uh, and so that's what we did here. And then we just adjusted our puts up from 105 to 116. So we rolled those puts up, left our calls at 108. And here's where we're at on SMH. So if we go to the analyze tab, you can see with this down move now, prices come all the way back into center after that. So we've already made up over $500 back uh, on that piece of the trade. And then we've got another piece as well, another adjusted strangle. Uh, and this one is fairly centered as well. So now, if we can just get some, uh, you know, bouncing around ping pong action in this in this area, we'll be in great shape in SMH. Next trade was an opening adjusting trade in IYR. So we already had one iron condor in IYR, and we went ahead and added another one out in the September cycle with 52 days to expiration. So we've now we've got two different iron condors. IYR is the real estate ETF, and you can see when the market has been tanking over the last few days. Uh, real estate has held pretty steady. Obviously, with lower interest rates, that benefits the real estate market. So it doesn't have that correlation to stocks like some of these other indices that we have on, which is great. We want to have these uncorrelated symbols that don't necessarily all move together. So we've got uh, these two different pieces. One is still in August. Uh, this is the one we just added. 
from the alert. Uh, still pretty centered. We're down a tiny bit because of the implied volatility expanding. And then we've got our other one that's still in August, which is kind of hanging out in the upper end of the range. Uh, you can see right here near the break even. So could use a little bit of downside on that piece. And then the other one, uh, you know, it, it's pretty dead centered. So we'll continue to manage those as needed. Next trade was a closing adjusting trade in wheat. So we closed one set of our iron condors in wheat uh, with just 24 days to expiration, booked almost 40% of max profit on that piece of the trade. And then we're still holding our short put vertical side in September. Uh, we added another piece in wheat. So I'll go to the platform when we get to that one. Uh, next trade was a closing trade in SPX. So we had a, a weekly double calendar on in SPX. Uh, this one came back right dead centered uh, on the last day of trading, which is awesome. Booked a nice profit over 1300 bucks in seven days on that trade. Uh, and then here's our other wheat trade. So what we did here is we just added another iron condor out in the October cycle, which at that time had 50 days to expiration. And, uh, and so that's where we're at here. We've got two pieces in wheat. We've got the short call vertical spread, which is uh, in this cycle with 21 days to expiration. And remember, when we, when we have defined risk, we don't mind holding that closer to expiration. So we don't necessarily roll that once we get down to 21 days. Uh, we're going to hold that. You know, we've got a decent probability that this, this thing will come back into range. So we want to play those probabilities and, and let that potentially happen. And then the other piece that we've got on is this centered iron condor, pretty close to right where we put it on. No profit or loss at this point, dead centered, just waiting for some more time to pass in that one. Next trade, closing adjusting trade in ZB. So we had two different uh, short strangles on in ZB. This is one that we put on, didn't make any adjustments to, booked over 30% of max profit in just 11 days on that piece. And then we've got our uh, our other adjusted strangle, which we had an alert on this morning. So I'll go, over, I'll go to the platform when we get to that alert on ZB. Next trade was an opening trade in SPX. And so we uh, added a new weekly double calendar in SPX. Uh, we did this one with eight days to expiration on the front week and then 22 days in the back week. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at that. Now, this one has already, that's our iron condor that we put on this morning, but let's go to the double calendar. So this one we just put on yesterday, <clears throat> but with a significant price uh, down move today, we're already out of range here. And so remember, when we put this on, we put it on for, let's take a look here, uh, $24.95, okay? So just to refresh on how we manage these, if it gets, uh, gets to a losing position, is $24.95 times 0.25, so 25% of the debit paid, that's, call it $623. So if we get down on this trade, about over $600, about $623, we would look to exit. That's kind of our theoretical stop loss. Well, look what we're down right now. We're down about $437 as we, as we stand at the time of this recording. So here's a couple things. One, this is the risk of this trade, right? If we open up Sunday night or Monday morning and the S&P gaps down significantly lower, well, guess what? We're, we're probably not going to get out at a loss of 600 bucks. We might lose a lot more than that. Okay, so that's the risk of this trade. You need to understand that. You need to position size accordingly to accommodate that. You don't want to be blowing out your account. Now, obviously, if, if price comes back in range, we'll be in good shape. Uh, but I, just, I, I like to reiterate the risk uh, because a lot of people just like to look at the upside. And then when when things go crazy, um, you know, they kind of, they kind of freak out. So understand that. Uh, the other thing is, you know, we've had a couple people in the community trading SPY for this trade. So SPX is 10 times the size of SPY. We like to do SPX just because A, our account can sustain it, but B, um, you know, SPY does have that uh, potential risk of assignment. Now, is it really a huge risk? No, it's just more of a pain in the butt. But you, you know, as you get closer to 
to expiration, if you do have in the money options, you do have the potential to get assigned in SPY, whereas SPX, you can't get assigned and it settles to cash at expiration. So anyway, just kind of a refresher on that. But that's where we're at. That's where we're at on the double calendar. Now, uh, with price moving out of range, we went ahead and added another SPX weekly trade. And this one we did in, with an iron condor. Remember, if implied volatility is spiking, which market going down like it is, we've got implied volatility expanding, then we want to sell an iron condor uh, to, to uh, take advantage of that. We just put this on this morning on Friday. We're already up 350 bucks. Um, and the one thing that we did on this one that's a little bit different out of, you know, kind of what we talked about in the course is we already had the double calendar. We put on yesterday, it had eight days to expiration when we put it on. Today, one day later, obviously it only has seven days. So I didn't want to put the iron condor on in the same cycle as the seven days. And so what I opted to do is go down to the five day. Now, I typically don't go that short of duration. I like to stay in that six to eight days. But with the heightened implied volatility, it allowed us to get a really good credit in that short duration time of just five days. So remember, the theta is going to decay quicker uh, with the shorter duration. And, um, and so that's why I chose the five days. And obviously, you can see, I mean, we already got theta decay of almost 350 bucks uh, just since we put this on this morning. So that is the deal in our SPX weekly trades. Let's go back to the alerts. Next trade was an opening trade in IWM. So after we saw that decent drop, uh, implied volatility was popping. So we wanted to sell some premium, did not have a position on an IWM. So that's what we put on. Get rid of this theoretical one. So this is what we have on. You can see price is still dead centered here, up t a tiny bit since we put that on, but just waiting for some more time to pass on that one. Next trade, closing trade in Baidu. Wow, what a move in Baidu. I thought we were dead in this one, <laughs> to be honest. We, uh, I mean, we, we put this on. Baidu came out unexpectedly and changed their earnings date, which implied volatility then immediately crushed. We were fairly centered in our long straddle. And so we are down a bunch, but thank you, Mr. Trump for your tariff tweet. Uh, but Baidu, you know, kind of tanked along with a lot of stocks. So if we take a look at Baidu, uh, you can see it, 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 it dropped a decent amount enough anyway. And with implied volatility expanding gave us the chance to get out of this trade and we took just a tiny winner. I think we made like 64 bucks or something like that on the trade, but we were down about 500. So good to get out of that one with a squeaky little profit. I'll take that every day of the week. Uh, next trade, rolling adjusting trade in DIA. So we had two sets of short call verticals. One of them was in August. Uh, one's already out in September. We took the one in August that had 14 days to expiration, rolled that out to September with 49, adjusted the strikes down to accommodate for the down movement in price. Uh, and this roll just extends that duration in that trade, keeps that short delta in our portfolio, which we need. And, uh, you know, we're, we're above 50% of max profit on that piece. And so that's why we wanted to roll. And then we just hit, went ahead and rolled out to September because there's only 14 days left in August. So we've still got both of those pieces on. If we take a look, uh, here is the one that we just rolled. You can see price is right here, basically right where we rolled it to. So just looking for some more downside to benefit that. And then our other piece that was already in September, you can see we're, we're over 50% of max profit on this piece as well, already out in September. So what we'll do next week if price continues lower is we will roll this roll these strikes closer to price, kind of lock that in and continue to hold that for that short delta exposure. Um, so that's the plan there in DIA. Remember, I like to spread out these rolls. So just because it gets to 50% of max profit, you know, I'm not in a huge hurry. I mean, we've got a ton of time left in September, 49 days. Uh, but you know, if this price continues lower, we will go ahead and roll that out. And, and the reason we do that is if you can see what happens to the the PL line, you know, still got a decent traject trajectory, if I can say that word, uh, as price moves lower, but then it starts to flatten out. So we don't want to get to the point where, you know, if, if it continues lower, it's not really benefiting us much. And if we'll we'll roll the strikes closer and then have a little bit, you know, more 
a little bit more sharp, I guess you could say, a little bit more uh, sharp uh, P&L line. Not sure if that's the best word to use, but <laughs> that's what I came up with. Um, anyway, so that's where we're at in DIA. Next trade, opening trade in VXX. So if you go back to our VIX course, uh, this, we haven't done this in a while because implied volatility has been pretty muted, pretty low, pretty con uh, continuing to contract. But with this spike in implied volatility, we went ahead and added on a short call vertical spread in VXX, just like we teach in the course. And so let's take a look at that. Here's that. We, we like to put this on with around 65% plus. I think it had right at close to 65% uh, probability of profit. Uh, even though we actually profit on these, um, you know, closer to 90% of the time. Remember, VXX it has that built-in drag to the downside because it uses futures that continue to roll, and it goes into uh, uh, periods of contango and backwardation. If those words don't mean anything to you, don't worry. It's all explained in the course. Bottom line is this thing will continue to uh, drag to the downside. Now, obviously, a uh, with the spike in implied volatility, this thing's really popping higher. So the goal is to sell that short call vertical, let things settle down, price will contract, and that's how we'll make money on this trade. Now, you might look at this and say, you know, what a terrible risk to reward ratio, right? 1941 is what it uh, took us in capital to get into the trade. That's also our max risk, but we're not going to let this thing go all the way to max risk. I mean, the goal is, you know, I mean, if this thing, the, if the market continued to tumble next week and this thing spiked up, meaning you know the overall VIX got up into the 30s, 40s, uh, you know we would probably exit this one. Usually, it's right when we get to that bend of where our long long strike is. So if this shot up to 34, we'd probably just close this out, take the loss, and then we'd also be putting on other other pieces to this to uh, you know to benefit it, get it out at a higher price. We always do these with defined risk because, you know, if things, you know, if things really got crazy and this market just really plummeted, we do want to have that as kind of a catastrophic loss, but I've never taken a full loss on uh, on one of these trades. All right, next trade, rolling adjusting trade in ZB. So this is the uh, bond uh, futures. So we've got... Um, this is our adjusted one. I already mentioned in an earlier alert, we took off one, booked a profit on that piece. And then we've got this one where after the announcement, bonds continued higher. Bonds have an inverse relationship to interest rates. So the Fed's lowered interest rates. Therefore, uh, bonds are supposed to go higher. Now, that doesn't always happen. So it's, it, you can't just bank on that. If you knew that the Fed was going to decrease uh, funds by the federal fund rate by 25 basis points, there's no guarantee this is going to go up. But it did, in fact, uh, increase after the announcement. And so we went ahead and rolled this. We rolled our puts up closer to price, and we rolled this out to the next cycle. So you can see price is hanging out right here. We need some downside movement to get back into center of this range. Now, what we'll, what we will do is we'll look to add potentially another centered iron condor, or excuse me, uh, short strangle next week, assuming implied volatility stays nice and high. Obviously, if we get a significant drop over the weekend or opens up down, and we're back to center. We're not going to add another one, but if price kind of stays around this area or moves higher, we will add to this. If we look at TLT, the corresponding ETF, you can see implied volatility, just like a lot of things right now, nice and high, so a good time to sell premium in that. Uh, so that's that's the plan in ZB. And and this, you know, this is similar to stocks. I mean, you know, we, there were some uh, comments in the community about, uh, you know, about this, you know, and this extended move, and it, and. I got the feeling that a couple things. One, uh, they had the feeling that, man, this thing's going to go up forever. Well, it's not. You know, I mean, you get these huge moves up, and there's nothing to say that next week this thing can't collapse and be down below the, the recent lows. Uh, but we're just going to be mechanical. We're going to stick to the script. We're going to roll up the untested side. We're going to roll out in time, continue to collect those credits, continue to play the cyclicality of the market. The beauty of the injustice, of the adjustment method that we use is that you're rolling up the untested size. So in this case, you're rolling up the puts and you're kind of, and you're collecting a credit and then, and you're playing that cyclicality. So when this thing does roll over or starts to get steady and just kind of bounces around for a while, like we saw here, then we'll benefit from that. 
and and get back to uh, get back to profits. So that is the plan in ZB. Uh, yeah, it's been super strong, but it can't go up forever, and we're just going to stay mechanical. Uh, and 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 again, you know, earlier this week we booked a profit, so we we had the one that we're kind of rolling and adjusting. Then we put on another one, had that sideways action, booked a nice profit. So that kind of adds to the adds to the you know taken away from the losses that we have in the one trade. You know, I know it's painful when when this is you know when you see these huge moves and and it's already and it has already gone against you, but you just got to stay mechanical. The other thing that I got the feeling of a couple people is. You know, if if you're stressed out about one trade, if you're stressed out about one trade moving against you, then you're probably trading too big for your account size. And ZB is a decent sized product. Uh, if you you know if that's the case, then maybe you want to take a look at ZN. It's half the size. So keep that in mind. Make sure you're position sizing accordingly, or do you defined risk, or you can trade TLT as the ETF. You know, so those those are all those all kind of move together. So, if you're selling premium in ZB, you could also do it in ZN. You could also do it in TLT. Those all move very highly correlated together. All right, next trade is an opening trade. A lot of trades today on Friday, so hopefully I didn't overwhelm everyone. But we had to we had to sell some premium. We had to get into some trades. We had to make some adjustments. So it ended up being a lot of trades, more trades in one day than we typically have. Uh, but that's just part of the deal. You don't get to choose when you trade. You got to you got to react to what's going on. I already mentioned this one. This is the SPX Iron Condor that we just put on this morning. And the next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in GS. Our friend Goldman Sachs. Uh, we had a long put vertical on that we initially put on for some short delta. It went against us. We extended duration on it, and then with this down move, it uh, it moved back in our favor. And so we went ahead and rolled this out to the next expiration cycle, locked in what we had. And uh, so now we're just looking for a little bit more downside to benefit this piece. And lastly, we had a closing trade in Walmart. So we had a, uh, a pre-earnings long strangle on in Walmart in anticipation of implied volatility increasing leading up to earnings and looking for a decent price move. Uh, we got both of those, obviously, with everything going on. Booked over 25% profit on that trade. So we are out of Walmart. So those are all the alerts. Let's take a look at some of the other trades. Oil, man, oil's been moving around. It was down almost 7% yesterday. Now it's back up 3% today, back into center. Um, so we're just kind of sitting here waiting for some more time to pass, waiting for some implied volatility to contract. Uh, so that's where we're at there. Uh, ES, we've got a uh, long put vertical here. This is another one that we could have rolled today, uh, but you know we, we just wanted to give over the weekend, and we kind of want to spread out these rolls so we're not doing it all around the same price level in the markets. Uh, but we are definitely well over 50% of max profit on this piece of the trade. We've just been holding this and rolling it for that short delta exposure, and we'll continue to do so. Um, and this one's got you know, still a lot of time, 49 days to expiration. So if price continues lower, we will just look to roll these strikes closer to price, kind of lock that in and continue to hold that short delta. By the way, I've got a, another, a new strategy course coming out soon. I'm, I'm working on it right now. It's probably still going to be a couple months away. But, um, you know, it's going to be a strategy that I think you guys are really going to love uh, that I, I just kind of, I, I used to trade and I kind of forgot about it. Uh, not forgot about it, but I just kind of got away from it. And I think it's going to really help with, um, you know, giving you short delta in your portfolio, but also not getting killed on the way up when prices uh, do have that upside uh, movement. So super excited about that. Can't wait to share that with you guys. So that's ES uh, Gold. We've got an iron condor in gold. Price is pretty dead centered there. Got a tiny bit of profit waiting for some more before we do anything there. Natty Gas will not quit to the downside. Uh, this is one of our uh, uh, down uh, red PLs today. Uh, you can see price is out of range. You can see we got a tiny bit of profit still left in those calls, but any more down movement into next week out of Natty Gas, we will roll down those calls. And we've got only 25 days to expiration with both of those pieces. So early next week, we'll be looking to roll those out to the next cycle anyway. Hopefully, we can get a little bit of a pop higher before that happens. Uh, let's see, next trade, bonds. I already went over that. Wheat. 
Uh, did I, yeah, I went over that one. Apple. So in Apple, we've got this uh, sh uh, long put position, long put vertical in Apple. Uh, still in the August cycle, so if we get some more down movement, we'll look to lock that in and roll the strikes closer and out to September. Uh, no hurry uh, because we've, we've still got a decent amount of time, 14 days left in August, uh, so we can do that next week or the week after. But if we get a sharp move lower, we will definitely roll that next week. DE, John Deere, finally coming back in our favor. Uh, just same thing as Apple. We're just kind of holding on to this. A, it gives us some short delta exposure, and B, we'll just uh, continue to manage this as needed. Sharp move lower. We'll look to roll this out to September. Um, so that's the plan in DE. DIA, I already mentioned that one. Goldman Sachs. Intel. So we've got this adjusted short strangle here. Price came nicely back into center for us. Uh, we're up a few hundred dollars since we did that roll. Uh, still, I'll have to look. I think we're still down slightly on the trade overall after adjustments, uh, but definitely coming back in the right direction there. And this one is in September, so we still got a decent amount of time, 49 days, so nothing to do there as far as from a timing standpoint. I mentioned IWM, IWR, QQQ. We've got these two sets of short call verticals, which are pretty close together. Uh, again, kind of one of those situations where we are at over... Uh, uh, we are at over 50% of max profit, but just want to spread out these rolls, spread out these adjustments. So if price continues lower into next week, we'll definitely be doing some adjusting and rolling in QQQ. We'll roll at least one of these out to September because they're both in August, uh, and we'll continue to manage those. SMH, I mentioned that one. SPX, I mentioned. SPY, we've got a short call vertical spread that was originally part of an iron condor. Kind of the same situation. We're get, we got over 50% of max profit. We will either, you know, we might just add another centered iron condor. We need to get some more short premium on. Uh, and then we could close this one out or we'll keep it on and add the iron condor. We'll, we'll see what's going on next week. Uh, but look for either and or both of those options next week. VXX I mentioned, and lastly, XLK. This is another one we've been kind of rolling for that short delta exposure, and we've uh, come back into the range here and just continuing to hold this for some more short bias exposure. So those are all the alerts. Those are all the positions. Everybody have a great weekend. Look forward to some more two-sided action in the markets next week. Talk to you then.